In the 1996 hit movie Twister, an almighty tornado wreaks havoc in rural Oklahoma. In one scene, the massive storm picks up a cow and hurls it through the air. Audiences watched, munching on their popcorn while chuckling, quote unquote, only in the movies. However, this really does happen. A full strength F5 tornado can lift far heavier things than innocent livestock and throw them hundreds of meters. In 2011, a Mississippi tornado threw a pickup truck almost two kilometers. In Argentina, in 1973, farm tractors were hurled 500 meters through the air. And in 1999, a Texas F5 tornado ripped the actual hides from the bodies of cows. Tornadoes such as these are incredible demonstrations of the elements at their most devastating. They're caused by huge thunderstorms and are basically funnel-shaped vertical columns of spinning air. The high-intensity tornadoes have recorded wind speeds of over 450 kilometers an hour with diameters of up to 4 kilometers. These are truly terrifying wind funnels and they can last as long as 3 hours, traveling distances of up to 300 kilometers. They can destroy houses and buildings, flatten entire towns, and leave power and water supply severely damaged. Tornadoes are prevalent worldwide, and they commonly occur when the air temperature is heating up in the summer or late spring. North America, Southeast Asia, South America, Australia, Europe, and Africa all experience tornadoes of some intensity. Although tornadoes occur throughout the world, the mid-region of the U.S. is a particular hotspot. It has an average of 1,200 tornadoes a year, which is more than Canada, Australia, and Europe combined. States such as Kansas, Missouri, Iowa, Oklahoma, Colorado, and Texas are especially vulnerable to tornadoes. The damage caused by tornadoes in these areas alone can range anywhere from $700 million to over a billion dollars per year. So what exactly causes tornadoes? Well, it requires a very specific pattern of weather conditions for them to occur. As mentioned earlier, tornadoes are essentially vertical spiraling wind funnels that are brought on by heavy thunderstorms. So here's how it works. The first thing tornadoes need is a thunderstorm, specifically the kind that forms on warm and humid days. Although they can occur at any time, tornadoes tend to happen later in the day, when the ground is at its hottest from being heated up all day. The hot air from the ground rises up, and when it meets the cooler air from above, the moisture condenses, forming clouds. We all recognize these dark clouds in summer as a sign of an impending thunderstorm, but a tornado also needs wind shear. This is when the speed and direction of winds change with varying heights. For example, we might have slow, warm winds moving one direction on the ground, while at a higher altitude we also have cooler winds moving at faster speeds in another direction. This creates a horizontal rotation of spinning water droplets. The warm air rising up into a thunderstorm is known as an updraft. When the updraft rises and meets the horizontal rotation, it tilts until it's vertical. This not only increases the speed and the power of rotation, but it also drags the thunderstorm's clouds lower toward the ground. A thunderstorm with this spinning column is called a supercell, which will often lead to a tornado. Its energy comes from siphoning up warm air and moisture while ejecting cold, dry air towards the ground, forming a vortex. Some of the most dangerous tornadoes have a multiple vortex, which means, as you would imagine, they have several vortexes spinning inside of a major vortex. The battle between the updraft and downdraft forces the vortex into a funnel shape. As the cloud of energy becomes more contracted, it increases in its speed. Not unlike ice skaters who bring their bodies in tight as so to spin faster. At this stage, we still don't have a tornado, but we're getting awfully close. When the weight of the downdraft of dry, cool air becomes too much, the funnel cloud is forced into touching the ground. Now we have a tornado. Once the storm hits the ground and becomes a tornado, anything can happen. Some last only a matter of seconds, and then they die out. However, the truly scary tornadoes can run rampant for as long as three hours, laying waste to everything in its path. These tornadoes have clocked in at speeds at in excess of 450 kilometers an hour, which is actually right up there with bullet trains of Europe and East Asia. This is when the tornadoes are at their most lethal. People can be killed either by flying debris or by being thrown through the air themselves. Winds at these speeds will overturn vehicles, level houses and buildings, and turn broken glass and other objects into deadly missiles. The Enhanced Fujita Scale is a system used to evaluate the intensity of tornadoes based on the damage caused. Named after meteorologist Ted Fujita, the scale ranks tornadoes from a low of F0 to the most extreme being an F5. An F0 or an F1 tornado describes damage as light or moderate, while F4 and F5 tornadoes are classified as devastating and incredible. And that's for good reason. An F0 rated tornado will cause relatively minor damage, such as ripping branches from trees or bending road signs. There's no serious potential harm for people at this level. As the tornado levels of intensity increase, 
As you would imagine, so does the potential damage. It doesn't take long for the danger factor to skyrocket. For example, a lowish range F2 tornado will typically have wind speeds of up to 250 kilometers per hour. That can still rip a roof off a house, can flip over a car and trucks and create dangerous flying debris. Now, when we get to the most feared F5 tornadoes, the likely damage and danger is so scary. F5s are capable of turning cars into actual projectiles and ripping up steel-reinforced factory buildings. The most destructive F5 tornado ever recorded was the Tri-State Tornado in the United States in 1925. It tore through the states of Indiana, Illinois, and Missouri on a 350-kilometer trail of absolute carnage. It lasted for more than three hours, and it claimed nearly 700 lives. To date, it's the third most costly tornado in history. The deadliest tornado to ever strike happened in Bangladesh in 1989. As many as 1,300 people are believed to have been killed in the Daulatpur Saturia tornado. It was given an F4 ranking, and much of the death toll was due to the densely populated region where it occurred. In 2011, Missouri was hit by a multiple vortex tornado which killed 158 people. It was also the costliest in U.S. history, with the damage bills coming to around $3 billion. So the key to surviving tornadoes is actually ideally receiving sufficient warning well beforehand. Meteorologists study weather patterns, and they weather a thunderstorm seems likely to produce a tornado, they got all the details, all the data. Weather bureaus have developed sophisticated computer programs called numerical weather prediction models. And what these do is they analyze patterns in brewing thunderstorms. They have these algorithms that detect any abnormal or worrying signs that might indicate a potential tornado. Meteorologists are particularly concerned with any thunderstorms exhibiting vortex or spinning type activity. If the updraft and downward rain pressure are particularly strong in some thunderstorms, the light can be scattered, giving the sky a green appearance. While a green sky doesn't always guarantee a tornado, it can certainly be cause for caution. For non-experts, there are other indicators that can suggest a tornado is approaching. These include approaching clouds of debris and dust, as well as large hailstorms without rain. There you go, that's another clue right there. But I think perhaps the most eerie is the silence before the storm. The wind might die down and the air might become very still. Even if you can't see a funnel-shaped cloud yet, a cloud of moving dust and debris is usually enough to warrant immediate action. Many tornado victims are given almost no time to react, or they're caught unprepared. In some extreme situations, other people have miraculously survived after being caught in the eye of a tornado. They've described the inner tornado as being strangely calm and illuminated by constant lightning strikes. When a tornado warning is issued, people in the danger zone are advised to look after themselves and the loved ones first. There is little they can do to protect a house or a car in the case of a tornado. Those winds are just too strong to contend with. Plus, as you know, mom and pop always tell you, they're just items, you know? It's just material. Can't go buy yourself a new kid at Home Depot. The safest options, though, are to find low-level areas such as basements and ditches. The most dangerous risk for people caught in tornadoes is flying debris. Anything from broken glass and doors to car parts, signposts, and roofs can cause serious damage to anybody in the way. Although scientists aren't completely sure about why tornadoes finally stop, they do know that it comes down to the loss of energy within the cloud. When the updraft of warm air begins to cool, the tornado will begin to lose its energy, causing the spinning to slow down and eventually fade out. However, the time it takes for this to happen is crucial. A short-lived tornado that lasts a few seconds is pretty much harmless, and if anything, a chance to marvel at the wonders of nature. But when large-scale tornadoes go on rampages for over an hour, it's more a case of witnessing Mother Nature at her most destructive, and praying that you'll see the sunrise. 